South Africa is home to some extraordinary wildlife and is the setting for the drama Wild at Heart. I'm Stephen Tomkinson, and I'll be taking you behind the scenes, giving you a unique insight into the animal stars of the show. Hey, Lucy. As Danny, the vet in the drama, I've had the privilege of working closely with these special animals, and I'll be revealing how we achieve our incredible animal stunts. From coaxing a lion into the water, fun and games dealing with some precocious personalities, to the real life dramas of sick animals. Um, you can see that tooth is broken in half. And what happens when things don't go to plan. <laughs> Nestled in a game reserve is the building that doubles as Danny's home, Leopard's Den. Filming right in the heart of a reserve means we're surrounded by animals who have become key members of the cast. First, there's Lucy, a rather strong-willed giraffe who doesn't always do as she's told. Yeah. Look. But she's great to work with, and you can't help but look up to her. There's our two playful young lions, Monty and Boris. But don't be fooled by their friendly appearance. Just as they become dangerous lions on screen, they can also be quite unpredictable off screen. <laughs> Reliably friendly are the meerkats. And these guys, Elvis and Trouble, are always vying with each other to be the most popular on set. And finally, the elephant family, with three, the adult female, keeping control of her two wayward calves, Hannah and Marty. And the prize job of looking after them all falls to Vicky Brooker, our resident Dr. Doolittle. Come, guys. I can hear them galloping through the bush. Good guys. As a licensed animal wrangler, Vicky has been working with animals all her life, so she's got to know the character of each of them as if they were old friends. You've actually got to have a relationship with your animals, and I think that's the most important part, and it's the fun part, to have the relationship with the animals. And each animal is an individual, and each species is completely different. You've got to be a psychologist if there is such a thing for working with animals like that. Many of the animals at Glen Afric have been adopted by Vicky because they were injured or orphaned. They can't go back into the wild, but they found a new home and family as part of the team on Wild at Heart. <laughs> and Vicky's got the toughest job on set, trying to get the right performances out of the animals. Good boy, yes. Ready. And like any actor, they can sometimes be temperamental. From stealing the scene, to completely destroying it. Vicky is preparing for a rather unusual scene. How do you get an elephant into a kitchen? I don't know. With great difficulty, I imagine. Morning, Dub. Elephants are the world's biggest land animals. So getting one indoors promised to be an interesting challenge. So a few days before filming, Vicky starts by getting Marty, the elephant calf, used to the idea of going in. We're just doing a little bit of a rehearsal here with the elephant. We've put some carrots on the floor just to encourage the elephant to come into the kitchen. And we're just going to get her settled in the kitchen here quietly. Let her eat some carrots here. Good girl, yes. You're a good girl, yes. OK. There she seems like she's comfortable. She's just having a look around. Marty is used for the scene because her mum, at three and a half metres tall, wouldn't fit through the door. But we still had to reinforce the floor as Marty weighs about the same as a small car. Good girl, there's carrots in here actually. Some more on the floor here. No, just one at a time is good. Vicky wants to persuade Marty to open the fridge door see and that? look inside. See this carrot? It's going in the fridge. You see that? Look, it's in the fridge. 
Now, elephants do have an amazing memory. There we go. Good girl. So they only need to be shown something once and they will remember. So now look in the fridge. In the fridge. Remember we put carrots in there. But is it true that elephants never forget? OK, let her go. She wants to go out. In the wild, elephants will travel miles to places where they remember finding food before. But will the lure of the carrots be enough? Well done, Marty. I think she's got it. Good girl, yes. <laughs> and now, to check it isn't just beginner's luck, Vicky needs to see if she'll do it again. Come here. None of Vicky's animals are trained, so she uses food to entice a performance out of them. And the animals on the reserve get through a ton of carrots every week. Good girl, yes! So with the rehearsal done, all we need to do is make the kitchen look a bit more like a kitchen and film the scene. Have you not noticed anything? What? What do you mean? Like the elephant in the room. Oh, you mean your decision to stay? No, I mean about the elephant in the room. When Marty isn't on set, she lives out on the reserve and Vicky's taking the elephant family for a refreshing dip. Although an elephant skin looks tough and leathery, it's actually very sensitive and needs a lot of TLC. So as they would in the wild, our elephants take regular baths and love to wallow in the mud, which helps to keep their skin in good condition. Marty's very special to us, as she's grown up with us all on the show. Aren't you too young to be out here by yourself? Marty came to Glen Afrique at a young age, but her journey to the reserve was not an easy one. We got a call from the Kruger Park to say that there'd been a baby elephant um, orphaned by its mother, left alone. She just walked away from the baby, and the baby was screaming and screaming, and I sort of said, leave it. The mother will come back to find it. The mother never came back to find it. And then she fell into the river trying to cross the river. She just got swept down 12 kilometers. Then they eventually found her on a little island. And a friend of mine actually swam into the river to go and save her. And everybody said, you can't go in there. The crocodiles will get you. He saved the elephant and brought it back. And um, within a couple of hours, hey, yes, she started trying to drink from, from the mum, from three. Her baby, Hannah, didn't like that at all. She was chasing her from one side to the other. But within a couple of weeks, she got the hang of it. And it was really great because Hannah had a little friend to play with and they've lived together pretty much happily ever after. And I must say, they're very content, happy elephants. They have a nice life. No stress, hey guys? No stress. From our biggest animals to one of our smallest, Elvis the meerkat. And Vicky is taking him to set. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Now, this is a very special little guy. His name is Elvis, and he's quite recent uh, to our little family of uh, movie stars. He was terrorising some people in their home, had the cats on the roof, dogs running all over the place, so he was uh, sent to us immediately. And we were going to give him away and find him a good home. And after we'd had him for a couple of weeks and a couple of months, there was no ways that we were going to give him to anybody. So we have kept him. He's part of our team, and he has to get to set right now. We're in a hurry, my boy. Let's go. Come oh, on, my boy. Time for you to be a star. Like all the animals, Elvis will only get called to set when everything is ready for his part to be filmed. That way, he's not kept waiting around and spends the minimum time on location. And put him down. And action. And Elvis, being a true professional, normally gets it right first take. And the final scene was another perfect performance. But not all scenes are so easy to film. Far more difficult are the action scenes, but they're also the most dangerous. We're always trying to do bigger and better stunts. But imagine my trepidation when the producers told me that I will be pursued by one of Africa's deadliest animals across a fast-flowing river.
Lions are one of the most feared predators in Africa. With back legs designed for pouncing and front legs and claws designed to grab prey, they are extremely effective hunters. But despite the dangers, we wanted to film a scene where a lion chases me across a river. But the problem we had was that, like domestic cats, lions don't really like to get wet. So this called for the expertise of Kevin Richardson, a skilled lion wrangler with 15 years experience. There was a photo of, of me circulating on the internet with me swimming with a lioness in a river, and that obviously gave the script writers of Wild at Heart a great idea. And that idea was that a lion would hunt me down to a river and I'd swim across. But to my surprise, she would take the uncharacteristic plunge and pursue me over the water. In order to film the scene, we needed to get a lion who would be prepared to swim and we hoped that Kevin and his lioness Meg would be able to help. But while Meg was generally quite happy to swim with Kevin, what we were asking would be much more difficult. When I first heard about it, I thought that's, that's pretty cool because I normally just uh, swim with the lion in the river and it's, it's quite fun. But obviously when you're doing it for filming, there's a lot more that goes on. There's a lot more people, there's a lot more pressure. Things are gonna be a lot more specific. Uh, the lion's got to swim in a certain direction, in a certain place, get out in a certain place. To get Meg used to the idea of swimming all the way to the other side, we set up a practice session a few days before filming, where Kevin will try to get her to follow him across the water. But Kevin has his concerns. The river has been in flood, so the flow of the water is a bit quicker than it normally is, and that she's normally used to swimming in. In the wild, it's the lionesses that do most of the hunting, and they have a real killer instinct. So with the crew shut in a cage for their own safety, Hello, Kevin tries a gentle approach to convince Meg to come in with him. Hello. However, because the river is flowing faster than normal, Meg is reluctant to go in. Don't make me swim and then you don't swim, OK? We're going to go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. As Kevin edges into the water, Meg panics and lunges forward. The lion claws Kevin before swimming off. Hey, she's panicking because it's too fast. Too fast. So she's like also panicking, you know, yeah. trying to. She's, she's like, to Kev, come here. Yeah. I saw she climbed on top of you. Yeah. They're all down to the fat. Yes. A lion's claws can be up to five centimetres long, but luckily Kevin's injuries are mainly superficial. And Kevin blames the accident on the speed of the river. When the river's not fast flowing, I yeah. can stand in the river. Yeah. And then she swims to me and puts her paws on my shoulders. Yeah. And that's, you know, and then when she swims back, I swim back yeah. behind her. So there is method to the madness. Yeah. No, As they call idea. it a day, they can only hope that when they return in a few days' time for the filming, the river will have slowed down. But will Meg manage to deliver the scene? Unlike Meg, the lioness, we've had one animal on the set of Wild at Heart that you could always rely on for a good performance. Hamley the giraffe was a real scene stealer. He loved spending time with people, and being more like a pet dog than a wild animal was perfect to film with. Oh, no, you don't want to go back to your family. Because they'll only abandon you for ranger jobs or ex-husbands, and then before you know it, you're stuck in the middle of the bush talking to a giraffe, wondering why nobody seems to give a damn anymore. So one day, cameras rolling, I decided to try something out and see if he would take a carrot from my mouth. No rehearsals, no practice, no problem. Time to let you go as well. Come on. There's my boy. There's my boy. There's my boy. Working with this friendly giraffe really was a joy. But Hamley was a one-off. Most giraffes are not nearly as tame. Meet Lucy, our current giraffe. 
She has a mind of her own. Come on. If she doesn't want to do something, she won't. So in order to get her to take a carrot from a person's hand, Vicky has to spend a lot of time slowly getting her used to the idea. So we've started by getting the giraffe reasonably close to us, eating the pellets and the food that she's accustomed to, and then we're going to move on to using this nice little stick here with a carrot on the end. Let's see how it works. The bench is used as a barrier between Vicky and Lucy, as a single kick from a nervous giraffe can kill a person. Now, will she go for the food? Nice try, Vicky. Come on. Come on. A giraffe will eat around 35 kilograms of leaves a day, but Lucy is also partial to Vicky's horse pellets. I'm going to take the bucket away. Very quietly, yes. And I'm just going to add a couple of carrots very tactfully in here. This could take a while. It's the day of filming with Kevin and Lioness Meg at the river, and the crew begins to set up. Pulleys are used to transport both equipment and crew members over the river, which is still flowing worryingly fast. After the shaky practice session, no one is sure if Meg will go in the water. When the water was a similar level, she panicked a bit and uh, gave me a claw or two in the arm. So, yeah, we'll just have to play it by ear and hopefully she does a good job. Now, I love my job, but the insurers draw the line at me swimming with animals whose diet comprises solely of red meat. So first, we'll film Meg swimming across, encouraged by Kevin. Then, with the lion safely out of the way, we'll film me swimming and edit the two together. Close closes up, the lion gets to the other side, the lion's safe. Ready, OK. It's time for Meg to swim. And Kevin uses all his enthusiasm to encourage Meg into the water. Luckily, he speaks fluent lion. But with the river flowing fast, she isn't too keen. While Kevin is relying on enthusiastic encouragement, Vicky is resorting to bribery. Look at this, more cubes. Isn't that good? Wow, what a lucky giraffe. Getting an animal used to doing something new normally takes several days, if not weeks, of practice with just a little bit of progress made each day. And with a giraffe like Lucy, Vicky needs a lot of patience, as she completely ignores the carrots. With 20 centimetre long ears, giraffe have good hearing, but Lucy seems to be pretending otherwise. Now it is time to introduce the carrot on a stick. Not likely. Vicky has one last try. Look. It's going to take a bit more time. But while Vicky has the luxury of time, Kevin is under pressure and starting to get desperate. All the crew can do is wait and hope for the best. And eventually, Meg is persuaded to come into the water and the final scene works a treat. Whether getting a lion to water or cajoling a giraffe to consume a carrot on cue, both Kevin and Vicky rely on a special connection with their animals. Fun thing for me is the sort of little game you play, saying, trust me, trust me, you can come, you're safe, both on that same level. And I think anybody who's ever ridden a horse or had a dog in that type of a way will understand that silent communication between 
a person and an animal. It's so magic. It really is. Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Hello, beautiful girl. There's always lovely moments you can get little breaks on this set and you see something like two beautiful giraffes and a kudu. It's fantastic. There's not many other sets in the world where you can say that. Preparing her animals for filming is only a small part of Vicky's job. Her number one priority is the welfare of all her animals on the reserve. She's become worried about Hobie, who at the grand old age of 14 is her oldest lion, but has recently stopped eating. Hobie has been the star of many stories in Wild at Heart, and scenes featuring him are always full of tension. Can I help you with something, Hobie? When Hobie was rejected by his mother as a cub, he was bottle-fed by Vicky, a process which involves feeds every two and a half hours. And from that, they forged a lifelong bond. So she's particularly concerned when she finds that one of his teeth is badly broken, and as well as causing him to lose weight, there's also the danger that the tooth might get infected. In the wild, male lions only live until they're about 12. So at 14, any health problems are a real concern. So she urgently calls in vet Jonathan to take a look. Jonathan, just look there. Can you see? Just make a funny face, boy. Make a funny face. See there? His tooth, mm. his, his left tooth, it's just it's broken like yeah. that. You know, it's quite a big thing to do, but I think let's have a look, and then you can ascertain if you feel it uh, needs to be extracted or yeah. if we can repair it like that. Yeah, it's quite badly broken in half there. Yeah, I've noticed now he's not that happy to eat on it. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that is a problem. With Hobie losing weight, Vicky and Jonathan need to act fast to diagnose the problem and work out how to get Hobie back on his feet. At the lion enclosure, Vicky has brought Hobie inside so that the vet can have a closer look at his tooth. But in order to safely go anywhere near his mouth, Jonathan first has to give him a general anaesthetic. Lions don't easily let a vet put a needle in them, so Jonathan uses an anaesthetic dart on the end of a pole. It takes perfect timing to get the jab in correctly. And in a fraction of a second, it's done. So now we've got about between seven and 15 minutes to wait for him to go down. Gradually, Hobie loses consciousness. As with humans, you can never be sure how an animal will react to an anaesthetic. He's breathing OK, isn't he? John? Yeah, his breathing's good. He's lying quite nicely. So. Yeah, he's good lying like that. That's good. It's um, always difficult, this, you know. Yeah, it's not a nice thing, but um, unfortunately, this time we have to do it. I think this is the first time we've ever knocked him down in 14 years. So. Oh, really? Wow. After a few minutes' wait, Jonathan carefully goes in to make sure Hobie is fully under. When anaesthetized, some animals, including lions, keep their eyes open. So Jonathan puts a towel over Hobie's head to protect his eyes from flies and dirt. While he's under, a microchip is inserted so he can be identified electronically if he's ever lost. Just microchipping him. So there's chips in, it's reading, that's exactly what we want. It's time to have a closer look at that tooth. This is the dangerous part, putting your hands in the mouth of a lion. You can see that tooth is broken in half, and running in the centre of the tooth is a pulp cavity, and it is exposed. The root of that lion's tooth is probably going to go up to about that point. So to remove that tooth is not a small op. The tooth is too seriously damaged for Jonathan to do any more on sight. But whilst Hobie is under, it's a good opportunity to spray him with an anti-parasite solution, which treats for fleas and ticks, much as the same as you would use for your own cat at home. Now it's time to bring Hobie back around. 
an antidote is given and Hobie is left to wake up whilst Jonathan gives his verdict. The pulp cavity is exposed. It's okay. really open. Okay. And it will be quite painful because the nerve runs through right, in the centre yeah. of the tooth. So he's feeling it now. Mm. All right. Well, then we need um, to get him to the dentist. Yeah. To... They'll probably do a root canal because he'll yeah. try and preserve that yeah. tooth. Yeah. Is there any chance they could ever put on a, a, a false tooth? Crown. They do could do they that put in a one, crown? some wild animals. It's a, wow. I think it's a titanium tooth. That That's call. right. I believe they did it in a leaf. Yes, Great. So he's got a bit of hope to, to keep his Colgate smile. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> look, he's blinking in there. Yes, yeah, he's starting to wake up now. I think he's going to look like he's had a bit of a hangover. Yeah. But thank you very much. I think that went well. It's thank a pleasure, you. yeah. And after a few minutes, a rather drowsy Hobie begins to come around. It's a nice long sleep, wasn't it? It's a nice long sleep. The bad news is you have to go to the dentist. Yes. With hundreds of different animals to choose from, Vicky usually has just what we need living wild on the reserve. But for some scenes, we require a rather special animal. We had an idea for a storyline about an elephant who had been separated from his herd. Hey, it's okay. Elephants generally live in tightly knit groups and are even known to grieve if a member of the herd dies. In the story, my character Danny would lead the elephant across a river and back to his herd. Now, Vicky's elephants are good swimmers, but getting in the water with them would be dangerous, as they're not used to swimming with humans, and I could easily get trampled. Then the producers met elephant wrangler Sean Hensman and his elephant Chishuru, who've been swimming together for years. I was a little apprehensive, but the hope was that with a bit of practice, Chishuru would be safe for me to swim with. This is Chishuru. He's the main actor. He's the lead elephant here. Wait, he's a 16-year-old bull. Four years ago, he was wild. He comes from a farm where they'd overpopulated, and the farmer had a bit of a problem. He needed to reduce numbers, otherwise he would destroy his farm, and uh, he was going to cull them. So before he culled them, he offered them to us, and uh, we took them on, tamed and trained them, and uh, this is the result today. But he's a gem of an Ellie. I love him to bits. Yeah, he's a cool Ellie. Hey. New training and new things for these guys is actually quite cool. I think they really enjoy it. And a lot of the time, they actually, what are you doing? Put it back. No, put it back. Put it back. Up. Good boy. Across South Africa, the population of elephants is increasing, and they can eat around 200 kilograms of food a day. So if their numbers in an area get too large, they can come into conflict with humans, destroying crops and even uprooting trees in their quest for food. In the past, to control numbers, elephants in South Africa were legally culled. But tragically, it was often only the adult elephants that were destroyed, which left their young unable to look after themselves. Yeah. Ever since Sean was a child, his family have been collecting orphaned and unwanted elephants Wait. and bringing them to their Wait. farm. I got my first ellies when I was about seven. To have two baby elephants to play around with, to learn about, it was incredible. As kids, we used to go out and mess around with them to do amazing things like rounding up cattle, checking fences, even uh, going swimming on them. And Sean has been swimming with his elephants ever since. But in order for me to swim with Chishuru, he's going to need to spend several more days getting him prepared. But back on dry land, Monty and Boris, the lions, are also in need of some exercise, and Vicky is taking them for a walk. Just as a pet dog needs exercise, so does a lion. Except in this case, our lions aren't even on a lead. Up, 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 up. Vicky's son Richard is the second in command wrangler. He works with all the animals, but his passion are the big cats. My favorite animal probably at the moment would be a lion called Monty. I basically saved him from a cub. He was one of the, the female's first uh, litters. She only gave birth to one, which was him. 
I actually didn't look after him. I, I took him away after about four days and hand raised in that and he's turned out to be one of the best, nicest temperament line we've had so far. Hello, my boy. Lions are actually funny creatures because they're very, they're very intense with their love. And if you reprimand them, you've got to forgive them quite quickly. It's all about a relationship that you have. And as people are, every character and every personality is different. And exactly the same with the lions. Their personalities and characters are different and you need to learn and work with that. The more time you put into them, the more you understand them, and the understand their personalities, understand that specific species. In order to film with the lions, it's important for us actors to get to know and understand them too. So we regularly spend time with the animals that we're going to be filming with. And now it's my turn to take Monty and Boris for a walk. Here we go, Steve, just give him a pat on his back there. It's a bit disconcerting, though, being told to pat a lion. Say hello to Come Steve. On, my boy. Say hello, Steve. Good boy, Monty. It's your big boy fish. <laughs> But when it comes to lions, you always have to be on your guard. I was glad Vicky was there to calm Monty down, and soon he was back to his normal, relaxed self. It really is amazing to be able to get so close to these remarkable creatures. The king of the animals are also unsurprisingly one of the most dangerous to work with, and precautions such as fencing are always used. If they get annoyed, they can lash out without warning, and their predator instincts means anyone moving quickly or running away could be attacked as prey. There's absolutely no doubt that working with lions and some of the big cats is exceptionally dangerous. There is no cat, I've been in the business for quite a, quite a long time now, and there's no such thing as a tame lion, tiger, leopard, or in fact, a wild animal. They are all wild and they are potentially dangerous, and we're working with this all the time, so we've obviously got to have the best relationship that we can between us. They like to be with us and we like to be with them. Good boy. Plus the fact that we actually are not lion tamers as much as meat throwers, really. And then we just encourage them to come. So it works well on the reward system. So you've got a lion with a good attitude who watches your body language because you always, with lions, have to be the leader of the pack. You always have to be the alpha female or male. But that, together with working with meat backwards and forwards, making them happy, having a good time, it works for us. While lions are given meat to encourage them, Shushuru prefers oranges. And back at Sean's reserve, he's spending some time getting him used to the section of water where I would later attempt to lead him across. Come on. Getting an elephant to swim with an actor, there's some very apparent dangers straight away. Shoshuru is weighing in at nearly three tons. Your actor's uh, weighing in at about 80 kgs or 60 kgs, something like that. Good boy, well done. The most important thing was the trust and the actual just repeating of the training. So getting the elephant to do the same thing over and over again, but also showing him that we weren't there trying to hurt him or force him to do anything. It was just to get him used to it 100%. Good boy. Good boy. Well done. On the day of filming, the water was pretty cold. We had to put Stephen into a wetsuit, chuck him in the water, next to Chishuru and get Chishuru to work with Stephen. So we got Stephen to give him a couple of commands and then we got them into the water and we got Stephen leading him across the dam. With a bit of encouragement and a lot of oranges, Chishuru was perfect. He swam right next to me across the water. To our surprise, the rest of his herd arrived to meet us on the other side. So we included them in the scene. It was one of my favorite moments on the show. But very occasionally, there are real life dramas on set. And for Lucy the giraffe, who normally leads a stress-free life on the reserve, things were about to take a turn for the worse. We had finished filming for the afternoon and came back to Leopard's Den to a very worrying sight. Lucy's neck and head parading around the nearby swimming pool. To this day, I have no idea why she fell in the pool. 
Well, she's been there for five years, so I, and she walks around there all the time. I have no idea what happened, but she did. She fell into the pool. We think that she may have tried to drink from the pool, but slipped on the tiles and fell in, and it would be impossible for Lucy to climb out by herself. Winching her out was not a suitable option as she'd panic. So our plan was to try and drain the pool, put sandbags in the shallow end with the hope that she might be able to climb out. Well, the water was pretty much up to her chest, so it made it very difficult for her to try and get out. She would have only hurt herself. And you know, giraffes are, are, are designed very peculiarly anyway. They're pretty much not a balanced animal. The floor of the pool is an extremely slippery surface, and even the most sure-footed of animals could fall over very easily on it. It was all the more concerning because Lucy was six months pregnant at the time. Our immediate worry was that she could panic, slip and harm her and her baby. One of the advantages of her being so tame is that she coped with it a lot better than if she'd been a wild giraffe. If she'd been a wild giraffe, she would have absolutely just broken her neck, panicked to get out. She actually allowed people to get into the pool with her. It's a very small pool. And uh, drain the water out, put a pump in. We had two pumps draining the pool. With Lucy becoming agitated, it was key to get the water out as fast as possible, so a fire engine was called. But as we drained the water, Lucy became less buoyant, and it seemed impossible for her to be able to climb out of the pool. As we were now losing the light, we had to come up with another plan, and fast. Sometimes Vicky likes to take her work home with her. Meet Bailey, the three-legged cheetah who is a regular on the show. Here we have Bailey, quite hungry Bailey actually, I must say. <laughs> He's a very special cheetah, this. He lost his leg in an accident with a lion and um, was a bit of a misfit and he's turned out to be one of our best and most favorite working animals on film. Hey, Bates, you're a good boy, my boy. On the Leopard's Den set, we're getting ready to film a scene with Bailey, who is now waiting patiently in the enclosures for his chance to shine. He's such a charmer that we decided to write the part of a three-legged cheetah into the script especially for him. In this way, Bailey became Cassidy, our family pet. Back on the set, the crew have already started rehearsing with the human actors. But before Bailey can join them, Vicky needs to get him prepared for his star turn. Come on, guys. Come on, just sparkle you up. He cannot wait to get on to a trailer, to go somewhere, because it all involves fun things. You know, he gets lots and lots of food when he films, and he really enjoys that. So we're just going to, like any self-respecting actor, we're just going to sparkle him up a bit. Aren't we, my boy? It's lovely, my boy. Oh, isn't that nice? Good boy. Make up an order. Hey, my boy. Hey. Oliver over here, he likes to lick your hand. I think so. That will be her, though. It's very important that they enjoy their work. And not only is it important that they enjoy their work, but it makes our lives a lot easier if they enjoy their work, because then they won't eat us. Before taking Bailey to set, there's just time to say hello to Pumba the Warthog, who is a little envious of all the attention the cheetahs are getting. He's so beautiful. You love that, don't you? While Pumba lazes around in the mud, Bailey has work to do and is driven the short distance to the house. The scene that we have today, he just has to really sort of hang out with the stars of the show on Leopard's Den Veranda, which he does terribly well because he loves human interaction and he loves to be part of it. He is going to sit next to Rosie in the shot. Right. And um, hopefully when she okay, walks on the screen, she's got a little piece of meat in her hand and she's going to call him and have, hopefully he will follow her into the house. Okay. Um, 
He's actually very well suited for this type of work because through his amputation, he became very tame and very happy amongst people. And he's got a lovely personality and character, and I think that's all the things that we look for working with animals in films is that they have the right character, the right temperament, and we have a good relationship with them. Are you ready to go straight away? And with a bit of persuasion, Bailey follows Rosie into the house. Well, almost. But that is good enough for the director, and Bailey is given a break while they prepare for the next scene. Food is used to encourage Bailey, but he's never rushed. It's important that he does it himself, he thinks himself, and he does it in his own good time. It just makes him happier, a happier cat to work with next time. We only have the animal on set when it's absolutely necessary. So he's just chilling out here in the shade, and uh, we should be called back onto set in the next 20 minutes. The next scene sounds quite simple. All Bailey has to do is sit next to Rosie and look good. But getting Bailey to look in the right direction is a little more difficult. Bailey, Bailey, look here. Bailey, look here, boy. Ah! It may look hard to persuade Bailey to act on cue, but compared with the other big cats, Sit cheetahs are comparatively Sit. easy going. Good boy, yes. Cheetahs are relatively easier than lions and tigers, leopards, etc., to work with because he's safe. That's the important thing. A cheetah, as I always say, and people laugh, but um, he'll probably put you in hospital, but he won't kill you. Whereas with the lions that we work, there's a jolly good chance you'll just bypass the hospital. Action. Thankfully, without a scratch on cast or crew, Bailey finally nails the scene. Very, very nice. Tired after his performance, it's time for Bailey to go back home after a successful afternoon's work. As Bailey is leaving set, Elvis is back in the building. For this scene, we need two meerkats to run out of the cooker and along the corridor. So Sean has brought in his meerkat, Trouble, who lives with him on his elephant reserve. He's an absolute gem of a meerkat. He's very, very friendly, loves interacting with our guests and stuff. He's probably more popular than our elephant. He's uh, about 10 months old. I hand-raised him since he was a little one, and uh, he loves human attention and affection and all the good things that go with it. So, yeah, he's a lovely, lovely meerkat. You can see this guy's uh, sense of eyesight, eh? He can spot an eagle miles away. I don't think uh, I know many animals like him that get spoiled rotten every day with their tummies being rubbed and being fed. You can see he's well accustomed to it. <laughs> but Vicky's meerkat Elvis likes to work alone. No self-respecting meerkat wants to be upstaged, so which of our meerkat stars will steal the scene? First Trouble shows off by trying to catch a cockroach, but he's too absorbed in what he's doing, and Elvis has spotted an opportunity to shine. There he is. Notice the cheeky look to camera? When you work with animals, especially those as cute as a meerkat, you can't help getting attached to them. And this makes it particularly worrying when they get into trouble. Lucy had been trapped in the pool for three hours, and we still hadn't figured out a way to get her out. We drained the water and put in sandbags, but the sides were still far too high, and there was still no way pregnant Lucy would be able to climb out of the pool, and a fall at this point might well be fatal. As darkness set in, we decided the only way to rescue Lucy was to break away the side of the pool and create a ramp of earth down to the bottom of the swimming pool. They eventually broke the side of the swimming pool away. Luckily, it was on a higher area, so they could break the wall away and uh, make a sort of a gate for her to walk out. It was crucial that the slope was as shallow and smooth as possible. After several hours' hard work, we eventually had a sloping surface for Lucy to attempt to walk up. We just hoped she would be able to make it and wouldn't slip and fall. Yeah. 
We were all incredibly relieved as Lucy walked off safely into the night and both mother and baby were unharmed by the experience. But it was a reminder to us all just how special and precious these animals are to us. And over the years, we've all forged incredibly strong bonds with them, which has allowed us to achieve some amazing scenes. And I think it's fair to say that the animals have enjoyed it as much as we have. For cast and crew, it has been a privilege to get so close to these fantastic creatures. I'm incredibly lucky and every morning I wake up, I look at the sky and thank somebody who's put me in the position that I'm in. I've done it for a jolly long time and I still absolutely love every day that I do it. And for me, it's been an amazing experience getting to share my working life with these wonderful animals. <laughs> Tonight, more clips that are sure to get you laughing into 2013. You've been framed at eight. At half past eight is our second visit to Weatherfield and Coronation Street. While later at nine, Jason Mamford looks back at 2012 and works out just why it's been a funny old year. That's at nine.